Hello there, fellow squad mates, and welcome to another episode from our, quite lengthy at this point, coverage of the Imperial Munitorum Manual. For today, no less than part 10 from our presentation. Now, we have talked about survival gear, about requisitioning supplies, about rules and punishments, and even about medals. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is probably the most important one, and that is the weapons of a guardsman. I left these until the end because I already covered most of them in older videos, and you can find them still in the playlist called Imperial Armory. It is older, so you're gonna have to scroll down. So, for today, we shall talk about the more regular weapons, like las guns, pistols, shotguns, and that kind of thing, with the support weapons for the next episode. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Part the Sixth, The Personal Weapons of the Imperial Guardsman Section 1. Identification of the most common weaponry issued to a frontline trooper. The Imperial Guard is an immense fighting force, the greatest army the galaxy has ever seen, and its soldiers are the bright hammer of the Emperor, bringing his divine wrath to the heretics, xenos and traitors hiding in their foulness in the dark places. To carry out this holy task, we have seen how each guardsman carries with him the kit necessary to allow him to survive in the field, how he feeds and clothes himself, how he locates the enemy, and how he is able to fulfill his oath of loyalty to the Emperor. In this section, the various weapons available to the Imperial Guardsmen are described, together with any pertinent information regarding their usage or other facts that will no doubt be of interest to the average reader. In describing these armaments, this tome will limit itself to the basic operation of the weapons, leaving the understanding of these instruments of wrath to the priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Remember, each of these weapons is more than simply a gun, a tool to be used to kill, they are holy artifacts that fulfill their promise of existence by allowing each and every guardsman the chance to kill the enemy of humanity. Never underestimate the importance of that factor, for to do that is to forget the sacred duty of all citizens of the Imperium. The weaponry of the Imperium has largely been standardized thanks to the foresight of the Emperor and the Adeptus Mechanicus in ages past, but each world in the Imperium produces its own local variants of the weapons described here. Other weapons are produced on Forge Worlds, or are produced in newly consecrated Forge Temples on Conquered Worlds. Despite the many small variations that exist between weapons produced on different planets, it is enough for our purposes to assume that they function in a manner similar enough to be called the same. For the purposes of this tome, each of the weapon patterns discussed here is the Cadian pattern, as employed by the Guardsmen of the 91st. The Las Gun The Las Gun, also known as the Las Rifle, is the standard weapon of the Imperial Guard, and the most popular weapon among a great many human forces throughout the galaxy. It fires an explosive energy blast with a similar effect to a bullet or a small shell. A Las Gun may not be the most effective weapon in the galaxy, but it is easy to manufacture and maintain and very reliable, even under the toughest of battlefield conditions. The weapon is very robust, and can survive even the most violent mistreatment, although soldiers are to be reprimanded for using their weapons as clubs. With the attachment of a bayonet, a last gun becomes a formidable close combat weapon, and every guardsman is expected to train regularly in bayonet drill. Most of the last guns operate in the 19 megathule range, as this has been proven through live fire testing to provide the optimum balance between lethality and energy efficiency. Though last guns are manufactured throughout the Imperium, most Cadian regiments favor the Kentrel short pattern last gun. The last gun can be fired on two settings, single shot and full auto. Firing single shot is more accurate and provides more shots, but in some cases, 
For example, during an assault or defensive action against a numerous foe, full auto may be employed when marksmanship is irrelevant. The last gun is powered by rechargeable power packs, but carries a residual supply and can be recharged using its own solar converters. When in base, there will be designated power chargers, which may be used to recharge each guardsman power pack, and it is his responsibility to ensure that he keeps as full a load as possible at any given time. The enemy may strike at any time, and it is every soldier's duty to be ready. Although the last gun is by no means the most powerful weapon in the galaxy, its detractors should note that it is by far the most widespread. Such a thing could not happen were it a poor weapon, and any weapon, deployed in enough number, is a thing to be feared. Thus, it is the perfect weapon for the soldiers of the Imperial Guard, for mass numbers is exactly where the Guard excels. The Long Laz in addition to the redoubtable last gun's many variants, there are certain types of weapon that exhibit differences enough to be considered separate weapons. One such weapon is the sniper variant last gun, also known as the long las. Such weapons are only ever issued to the guardsmen who have displayed a flair for marksmanship, stealthy operations, and scout movement. For such weapons are difficult to produce and require more training and intelligence to utilize properly. A long las is a modified standard pattern las gun with a 52-3 strengthened barrel, which is both longer and thinner than the usual model. The strengthened barrel allows for increased range and greater accuracy. The rifle does not have a charge setting slider, instead employing specialized ammunition known as a hot shot. A hot shot is a high power energy clip with a liquid metal battery that fires fewer blasts, a clip is only good for about 20 shots, but compensates with a far greater lethality index. Due to the increased power of the shot, the stress on the barrel is considerable, and due to the resultant metal fatigue, a sniper needs to replace the barrel with greater frequency than he would a standard pattern last gun. A long flash suppressor fitted to the gun muzzle ensures that the telltale flashes of his shots do not betray his position, although standard practice is to relocate after each shot. The long las variant is quieter than a standard pattern las gun, also working in the shooter's favor. The Power Packs Fortunately for the Imperial Guard, laser technology is reliable and easy to maintain and replicate. Although the shots fired are not as powerful as the weapons of the Space Marines, they are certainly the most trustworthy. Used conservatively, a laser power pack will last for many shots, typically between 100 and 150, and can be recharged from a standard power source or by exposing the thermal cells to heat or light. In an emergency, placing it in a fire can recharge a pack, although such treatment tends to drastically shorten the useful life of the pack and increase the probability of a failing. Recharging a power pack in this way regularly will eventually result in it exploding, and such willful destruction of Departamento Minotaurum property will result in severe penalties being leveled at any guardsman caught doing it. Many experienced guardsmen prefer the last gun over the more powerful weapons for these very reasons. The Last Pistol The Last Pistol, or Laser Blaster, is a pistol version of the last gun, and enjoys the same reputation for ease of manufacture and convenience of use. It is issued as the standard sidearm of the Imperial Guard, and fires distinct bursts of energy, which, like those of the last gun, explode when they hit their target. Because the laser's energy is rapidly dispersed into the atmosphere, the lethal range of a last pistol is nowhere near as great as that of a last gun. Last pistols make excellent close combat weapons though, and combined with a sword, allows an infantryman to fight with great vigor in the hurly-burly of close quarters battle. Unlike the last gun, the last pistol does not have multiple fire settings and operates strictly on a single shot mode. Its power pack fits snugly in the pistol grip, and due to its reduced size, compared to a last gun, 
it fires consequently less shots. Most magazines carry enough charges for around 80 shots before they require recharging. Although soldiers employing a last pistol should be aware that the shots fired towards the end of the power pack's life will, in all likelihood, not be as lethal as the previous ones. Like most LAS weapons, there exists much variation in LAS pistol design, but all perform in the same way. Although many officers carry exquisitely adorned LAS pistols that are priceless heirlooms and have gone to war with generations of their family. The Shotgun The smoothbore combat shotgun fires a massive, low-velocity shot which fragments in flight into a multitude of lethal pieces of spinning metal or plastic. Although the weapon has only a short range, it is exceptionally dangerous against unarmored opponents. Combat shotguns have magazines of shells and are reloaded by means of a pump action. They are strongly made, simple weapons, which make them ideally suited to brave guardsmen who are soon to launch a close assault or troops of limited intelligence. A special feature of the shotgun is its ability to fire different kinds of shells, including solid shells and loose scatter shot, making them ideal weapons for close quarter fighting where the experience of putting a foe down is more important than accuracy. Shotguns are often employed by the armsmen aboard vessels of the Imperial Navy, since their low velocity rounds are unlikely to pierce the hull of a starship and are ideal for repelling borders. For this reason, Imperial Guardsmen should familiarize themselves with the operations of shotguns, as they will often be called upon to defend a ship when in transit between war zones. Although shotguns are impressively noisy when fired, they are unlikely to penetrate the armor of anything stronger than flak, or its equivalent, and should only be employed in situations where their advantages outweigh their considerable disadvantages. Against foes without armor or that scare easily, a shotgun is a desirable weapon. But in most other cases, a guardsman should rely on his trusty last gun when in a combat situation. The Hell Gun The stormtroopers of the Imperial Guard are trained and equipped to much higher standards than normal infantrymen and thus they are trusted with rarer and more specialized equipment than would normally be the case. Although all Imperial Guardsmen represent the finest fighting men of their home world, it is a fact that some men excel in combat, while others merely provide meat and bone. To these exceptional men and women are given more advanced LAS guns known as Hell Guns. Such weapons are the trademark of the Stormtroopers, and fire more intense shots than the more commonly available weapons. Though not as powerful as the hotshot power packs of the long LAS, the power cells of a hell gun allow for more rapid firing and can be switched between single shot and full auto. Since the stormtroopers often undertake the most dangerous missions, it is fitting that they should be equipped with the best weapons available in large quantities. Although the actual power of the laser bolt fired is comparable to that of a normal LAS gun, its penetration power is far greater and can punch through layered armor with ease. The Hell Pistol Just like its smaller cousin, the LAS pistol, a Hell Pistol is simply a smaller version of the Hell Gun. It has a comparable range to the LAS pistol, but its power packs have a much smaller shot capacity, typically averaging around 40 to 50 shots, depending on the age and condition of the power pack. Many LAS pistols are crafted by hand rather than stamped out in a forged temple, and many have glorious histories going back centuries. As might be expected, these weapons are typically owned by officers, although some particularly famous or lauded stormtrooper sergeants may have been awarded with a hell pistol as a mark of some great heroic action. Such things are of course exceptionally rare and most Hell Pistols remain property of the Departamento Minitorum, unless specified under Article 57332-534F. After recommendation from the Departamento Minitorum, Hell Pistols have been recognized as approved weapons for sanctioned executions. 
The high power of the laser blast vaporizes the wound and vaporizes much of the blood from the criminal to be executed, leaving the authorized officer or commissar's uniform pristine. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about some slash most of the personal weapons of the Imperial Guardsmen for today, or at least from the perspective of the Munitorum Manual. If some of these things might sound outdated, that's because the book itself is rather old. I did leave a few things out like grenades and bayonets or the ripper gun, but after I cover the support weapons, I will return for a final video and gather everything that I missed. What are your thoughts on these weapons, and the Munitorum's description of them? Will you stay and fight with your last gun, or join the Tau Guevessa for a shiny new pulse rifle? If you found the video informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome healthy day. The Emperor protects.